All right. <clears throat> so we just uh, got through talking about listing. Well, here's, uh, here's a problem that let's use as an example to show maybe there's a better way of going about this counting um, than just brute force uh, method of counting these out. Now, of course, what I've got here is I've got uh, George on our handout there. Um, George has uh, a problem, and he's wanting to figure out how many different outfits he can make with his uh, shoes and p p pants and shirts that he has. He's got uh, a green shirt, a red and a yellow, and a white shirt. He's got dockers for pants, and he's got a pair of savan, uh, just a type of pants that I used to own, but <laughs> jeans. Uh, that's his three uh, possible pants that he has to wear. And then he has black and brown, K for black and N for brown, shoes. All right, <clears throat> what I've got here then is the tree diagram showing all the possibilities George has for outfits. He can do his green, red, yellow, white shirt. But with his green shirt, he could wear his dockers or savan, or he could wear his jeans. And then he could, for his red shirt, he could wear his dockers, savan, or jeans. And for his yellow shirt, he could wear his dockers, savan, or jeans. You get the idea. All right. Now, <clears throat> if he wears his dockers with his green shirt, well, he could wear his black or brown shoes. Same thing if he wears his savan with green shirt, he could wear his black or brown. So you get the idea. All right. <clears throat> so how many different outfits can George altogether make. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24? He's got 24 outfits. Like I was saying though, is there a better way we could do this? Could we get the question down at the bottom? of the handout. Could we get the total number of possibilities without using the tree diagram? Hint, look at the number of shirts, which is three. The number of pants, which is oh, four. Four shirts, three pants, two shoes. Is there any way I could get 24 out of those three numbers? And I gave you a big hint right there on the board. What is 4 times 3 times 2? It's 24. Not by coincidence is that matching. Now what we did is, well if you think about it, here's how this is working. You see, um, each, I start out with, let's, let's start off with the, the shirts. First of all, I started with four shirts, okay? So there's four here. But doesn't that multiply to 12? Because for each of the four shirts, I can branch off of that three ways, right? So I can branch off, it's scrolled off the screen there, but um, I can branch off of it, off the green shirt, three ways. I can branch off the red shirt three ways, and then three ways. So that, that gives me 12, if you count them all up there. But then, off of each one of those, I branch off two or multiply by two because I've got the black or brown shoes. So that gets me to the 24. So yeah, it's a multiplying process. You start with four shirts, then you put in the three uh, pairs of pants. You got 12, then you put in the two shoes. That gives you 24. So it's a multiplying process. All right, well, <clears throat> let's take a look. page two. On page two, <clears throat> I give you what this is called. This multiplying process is called the fundamental counting principle. And here's, here's the statement of it. Suppose an event or task consists of multiple parts. If there are R ways to do one part, S ways to do a second part, T ways to do the third part, so on and so forth, then what do we do? We multiply 
those parts together. Take the R times the S times the T, and you know you could go on and on from there. Just multiply how many ways each part can be done. Multiply those together, and that's a, a nicer way you can do this without having to actually list them all out. Now, there is this little special note. This principle only applies if the number of choices for any particular part is the same no matter which choices were selected for the previous parts. This is called the uniformity criterion. In other words, back to George's example, if for one of the shirts he didn't have three possibilities for pants, <clears throat> this wouldn't work, a, a direct route anyway. Um, each yeah, each particular part has the same number of choices no matter what. So if, for his green shirt, he has three choices for his pants. For his white shirt, he has three choices. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about that more, but there is a uniformity criterion for this to work out. <clears throat> I also like to call this the blanks method because if you just do a blank for each part, like on George's case, uh, shirt, uh, pants and then shoes you've got a blank for each method so I like to call it the blanks method just fill in the blanks is one other way you can think of it okay so question one here how many ways could George choose an outfit then of shirts pants shoes and hat is so he's added to his wardrobe here he's got six shirts five pairs of pants three pairs of shoes and two hats well no need to go through a tree diagram, there's no need to list all these out. How many do we know he's going to have? Well, if he's got six shirts, five pairs of pants, three pairs of shoes, and two hats, how many is that going to be? Multiply those together, 180. He's going to have 180 different outfits at hand he could wear. Okay? So let's multiply those together, and you got it. Fundamental counting principle. Okay, question two. Richard's cousin, I mean Richard George's cousin, has eight shirts, four pairs of shoes, and two pairs of sh uh, four pairs of pants and two pairs of shoes. One of the eight shirts, though, is red, and one of the four pairs of pants is green. If Richard decides he will not wear his red shirts with his green pants, we can we determine the number of possibilities using this multiplication here, and why or why not? Well, obviously. Not, that's why I've brought this question here, and, but the reason why, why not? Why can't we do that? Well, let's think about it. All right, so he has eight shirts. For this to work, then he would have to have four for every one of those eight shirts for this to work. But is that true? Does he have four for each one of these shirts? No. If he can't wear, if he's not going to wear his green pants with his red shirt, for the red shirt, he has only three options. You see what I'm saying? So is it four or is it three here? That's the, that's the thing you run into if you have some restriction like that. Yeah, you can't do it this way because sometimes it's four, but then another time it's three. So you can't just say eight, four, two. You see what I'm saying? What you'd have to do is, is break it up into two, two groups. You could do it that way, but no, you can't, <clears throat> you can't do eight. It's not going to be eight, four, eight times four times two here because on one of the possibilities here, there's only three for that second blank. Okay? All right. Now, <clears throat> let me scroll up here. Okay, so for the coin problem, this explains then why if three coins are flipped, there's eight possible ways. Because if you put a blank for each coin, think about it, there are two possibilities for each coin, right? There's two heads or tails for the first coin, there's two for the second coin, heads or tails, and then there's two for the third coin. So there's two possibilities for each coin, what's two times two times two? 
That gives you eight. And we listed out all eight of them uh, a moment ago. But we can also use this fundamental accounting principle to do the same thing. Okay, so that then allows us to do more coins. <laughs> what if I did five coins? Flip five coins. How many possibilities are there there? Well, I've got five coins, I've got five blanks. How many possible for each coin? Two possible for each coin. Two for the second, two for the third, right? Fundamental accounting principle says multiply those together, which is what? How many is that? It's not 12. It's 2 times 2 times 2. How many? 32. 32. Now, <clears throat> the other thing to note here is uh, the exponential. I could write this um, or do this with an exponent, couldn't I? That's 2 to the 5th power. 2 5 times is 2 to the 5th power. So I could also get... 32 that way if you wanted to put it in as a power exponential. Okay? This also explains why if a two-digit number made from uh, the digits 0 through 3, we did that problem earlier, right? Two-digit number, 0 through 3, there are 12 possibilities. Since we're making a two-digit number, we need two blanks. So if you're doing how many every digit number? You do a blank for each digit. Okay, now why does it turn out to be uh, 12? Well, how many are there possible for the first blank? Remembering we want a two-digit number, so what can't the first digit be? First digit can't be zero. So how many possibilities are there for the first blank? There's three. One, two, or three. The second digit could be zero, so how many possibilities are there for the second blank? There's four. So three times four gives you 12 okay so you can do that with this blanks method too the fundamental accounting principle so let's go on here to question four how many five digit numbers are there then using the digits I just randomly picked some digits here zero one three four six I left out what two and five and seven but anyway how many five digit numbers could you make out of those digits only so I want a five digit counting number so it's five blanks. Why my pen is not cooperating here. Blank for each digit. How many possible for the first blank? Using those digits. One, two, three, four, five, six. Why not seven? Can't use zero on the first blank here. With me? Six. How many though for the second blank? You don't need six blanks. We're doing five digits. Okay. Yeah. So you, the number of digits equals the number of blanks. So I only need five blanks. The first one though can be six possibilities. There's six possibilities for this because it's these. One, three, four, six, eight, nine. But what about the second digit? How many possible are there for the second digit? Well, can the second digit be zero? Second digit can be zero, so we can do any of those seven. What about the third digit? Can it be zero? Can it be one? Yeah, it can be any of those seven. The rest of them are sevens. Fundamental counting principle says multiply those together, which again, if you want to do exponential, it would be six times, what, seven to the fourth power? You don't have to do it that way, but if you wanted to, you could. Be a little quicker. Six times seven to the fourth power. Fourteen thousand four hundred and six. With me on that? Question or concern? Question five then. How many six digit counting numbers are there? Any digit could be used. No restriction on the digits. How many blanks? How many blanks on this one? Well, if it's a six-digit counting number, you want six blanks. Okay.
Okay. How many possible are for the first blank? Well, since I can use any digit whatsoever out there, except in the first blank I can't use zero, what, how many possible numbers are there for that first blank? How many? Well, the digits here we're talking about are zero through nine, right? Question five. I can use any of those digits. 0 through 9. However, the first one can't be 0. So how many is that? 1, 1 through 9, which is not 8. That's 9, yeah. There's 9 possibilities. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. What about the second blank? How many possibilities are there for that second blank? Well, it can be 0, can it? So it could be 1 through 9, or it could be 0. So how many is that? That's 10. How many for the third blank? Third blank can be 0, could be 1, could be 2, could be anything through 9. That's 10 again, isn't it? The rest of them are 10s. Multiply those together. And and then ten five times. What do you get? Nine hundred thousand. <clears throat> so is it be zero through nine? So what are the numbers called such as ten, one, twelve? Right. Right. We don't have we're just we're just on our, our numbering system, yeah. If you're thinking other bases, no, we're not going to do any other bases other than base 10. So, yeah, we're, we're restricted on our numbers for digits 0 through 9. All right? Well, let's go to the electing the officers. When choosing a president and secretary for Club Z, the Rachel, Steve, Tina, Vicky was our club, there was 12 possibilities. We choose the president first and then select the vice president. All right, so that's um, two blanks. Why is it 4-3? Well, <clears throat> we've got four possibilities for the first. Let me do it right here. Explain it right here for this one. How many possibilities are there for the first officer? If I'm electing the president first, I mean, it doesn't matter which order you go, but we did the president first. How many possibilities could they elect a, a president? Well, it's these, right? Rachel, Steve, Tina, and Vicki. So there's four possibilities for president. However, since no one can serve more than once at a time, it's not four here. Because let's say Rachel was president. How many possible are there? Three. If Steve is president, one, two, three. There's only three there. So for the second blank, you see it goes down by one because you can't have the same officer twice. Instead of four, it goes down to three. Four times three, which gives me 12. Okay? So that's a little... If you can't have those repetitions, that's what it comes down to, boils down to. If you can't have the repetitions, then these number, this number is going to have to go down as you go. All right, <clears throat> so let's change, uh, change our club. Our club has expanded. We have 15 members now. And we're going to elect a president, a secretary, and treasurer. How many blanks? Three blanks. All right, so you need a blank for each office. How many possible for the first blank? Fifteen. Any of those members could be president. We're not restricting anybody. What about the second blank? It's going to have to go down to fourteen. Why? Because you can't have a repetition. Whoever's off, whoever's a president here can't be elected again here. So there's only fourteen, isn't it? That rules out one person goes down by one. Now what about the uh, treasurer? 
How many possibilities are there then for the treasure? Well, we're coming out of this, so whoever's here can't be again elected here, so aren't we going to have to go down by one again to 13? So 15, 14, 13, multiply those together. 2,730. They can do officers a lot of ways. Okay?